Okay, today by viewer request, we're going to make the aloe cane with dots and stripes along the edges of the leaf. You're going to need an extruder and your small, medium, and large spaghetti makers because that's what they make, let's face it. You're going to need dark green, very light green, and a white for a gradient mix. This green is this is out of the Sculpey Basics the green it's too bright nothing in nature is this color I go in and add slabs of black until I get a dark foresty color that I like this is a mix we use a lot on this channel this would be the bright green out of the Basics on the Sculpey and Primo Translucent over here I have Primo White and Primo Translucent. Both of these are heavy on the translucent. Add color slowly. This looks yellow on camera. Um, it looks greener in real life. It really looks weird against this, but I assure you that's green, not yellow. So that's how we got these colors. I make a fairly big cane of this. I use this a lot in almost all my plant mixes. Without further ado, we're gonna get on with it here. Okay. I've gone ahead and used my extruder. I've made a few of the large spaghetti. I've made a few more of these medium sized spaghettis. And then I just went ahead and shot out what I had left with the small spaghettis. We're going to use them for dots in the leaf and we're going to use those for edgings. So there's two uses. They rip really easy when you're using them sometimes. So I like to make extra of the really small stuff. And another quick tip, usually when I get down to the end it's easier and cleaner to run the clay all the way out of here and deal with the little bit of scrap end that's left than it is to unscrew this, pull this off, and pull out a plug about this big out of your tube. It's often very dirty. See how clean this clay is? If I had unscrewed this, there's little bits of stuff in here and eventually it gets on everything. If you just go ahead and squirt that end bit out of your extruder, you got all this nice clean clay even if you don't use it and you only have to deal with the nasty bits at the very end instead of getting like a whole plug with streaks and weird stuff up it. So I usually run the last of whatever clay I'm using all the way out of my extruder. That's just a little hot tip for me. So once again mostly do lots of little ones they break and then just a modest amount these are what you need the least of. These are our big dots. We go further up the leaf and then at the end in the edges. The next step is going to be to make a gradient out of this. Now I don't know what kind of techniques you've seen but I roll mine up into a teardrop shape, smush them into triangles and then smush them into a rectangle. I mean I don't have measurements. I don't go perfectly trimming and folding things. This works for what we're doing, and this is what I do. So I rolled them into a teardrop, flattened them into triangles, and now I'm going to stick them into my machine, point down, and start making myself a gradient. Okay, so taking this image machine, and I've just blended the heck out of it. And when I thought I blended it enough, I blended some more. I mean, just, just blend the ever-loving heck out of it blend it some more. Now here's another trick. This is from my Atlas 150 machine and this is as wide as that will get in the machine. I'm getting ready to run this through my machine this way so that I can get a long ribbon but right now if I run it through the way I have it it's uneven thickness and my ribbon won't get very long and I'd like a really long ribbon to add my to add my dots to. So once I have it to the length that it's going to get, I come in and I'm going to make a nice uh, bash those ends in, get some of this where it should be. I'm making it slightly skinnier, pushing air bubbles out to the ends, I flip it. So what I'm doing is I'm making a flat rectangle and I'm using this finger to push and lengthen Sometimes I stretch. 
So I'm shaping the. Oh, there's a big air bubble. You push that to the end. Don't be afraid to get your exacto out. Jab anything you see if it's too bubbly. I'm going to flatten that down, push towards the end a little bit. So you see, this is a hard to describe technique as well. But I've already made that. This is how long it was when it came out of the machine. I've already lengthened it quite a bit. But as I did that, I've evened out the edges. Even out those edges and lengthened it. And now when I run it through my machine, I'll have less waste that I have to cut off that I can't use. And this is almost twice the length I started with. It's still fairly thick. And I've made it skinnier this way, but when I put this through on a 3 or a 4 in my machine, it'll thin it out and widen it just a bit. So when this feels like an even thickness, and now we've doubled the length, now I'm going to take it back into my pasta maker, and I'm going to set it on a 4, which is fairly thin, but still easy enough to work with without tearing and we're going to run it through long ways so now what we have is a big long ribbon that's a lot of white on the end I don't think I need quite that much so I'm going to dangle this over my desk to one side I'm going to start here on my white end there's a lot of white before the green starts. And I only need one or two folds worth, so I'm going to come in here and whack some of this white off. I never know how much I want to whack off until I roll this ribbon out. Now, what we're going to do is start folding this accordion style, which is tricky to do with the camera setup I have right now. I'm going to roll, not roll, I'm going to stack, fold, two layers and then I'm gonna come over here and get my fattest pieces of spaghetti okay you can see there's my edge I'm gonna bring one in oh that is not my fattest spaghetti that is my medium spaghetti good grief here's my fat spaghetti these are mighty big dots what I'm gonna do is come in and lay two in on this layer and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to fold right over top of those strips that I put in okay pardon my hands I usually work way up in the air but I have a my camera resting on this mount here and I it's in my way so I'll do the best I can for you so now you can see where those two lines are laying. I want to randomly come in. I'm going to put one down in between of those. There's no right or wrong way to put your dots in. We're going to have so many dots in, they're going to look random. I'm going to set this one next to that one. Trim it. And then you come back, grab that ribbon, and fold it over those. Same thing. Grab your fat spaghetti. Try, trying to get them random when you're only using a few pieces is one of the trickiest parts about this. Because if they're not random, you're going to end up with a checkerboard effect, and that doesn't look very natural. I'm only going to put one in that layer. I'll come back and put three in the next layer. No rhyme, no reason. You absolutely do not want a pattern to form with these dots. These need to be random. So we only put one on that row. I'm going to put two on this row, one way towards the end, one sorted towards the middle, towards that other one, 
and then I'm just going to grab that ribbon and I'm going to fold it over those, line it up with the one below it. Now I have two here, I'm going to come way over on this end, add. I'm also going to come way over on this end and add. I'm going to grab my ribbon, flip it up over that. Grab a large spaghetti, layer it in there. Just going to add one on that layer. Flip it. Grab the ribbon, accordion style over. One here, and now I want to transition into the next size of spaghetti. So I'm going to put one fat spaghetti, I'm going to come over and get my medium spaghetti, and I'm going to put two medium spaghettis in this layer. doesn't matter. There we go. So we have three on there, but we put two of our medium spaghettis in there. I, see how we're moving into the next color green? That's how I knew when to switch. All right, I'm going to put one last fat spaghetti right here. I'm going to put one medium spaghetti right here. Grab your ribbon, flip it over, all right, now I'm just going to use medium spaghettis on this layer, one way over here, one right about there. Alright, for the sake of speed, we're going to speed this up until we hit the small spaghetti. Okay, we're getting to the darker green. I want to start mixing tiny spaghetti in with medium spaghetti. So I'm going to put two medium spaghettis. I'm going to grab some of this really tiny spaghetti. I'm going to put one of them in there. Grab my ribbon, fold. Okay, still want some medium spaghetti. Put that on there. Put one over here. I'm put two little spaghettis in the middle. Now we're going to continue with little spaghettis. Now these I don't run in with my blade and trim every time. I'll lay it across and rip. I could trim it and this might be making you a little crazy. But you know whose channel you're on and I take shortcuts sometimes when I can. You can't always take the shortcut, but when I can, I'm going to take it. This is one of those times. Alright, keep that nice and even on that stack. Come in with your little spaghettis. We'll speed this up to save some time. Now as you get towards the last little bit of ribbon that you have left, you want your dots to start getting a little sparser towards the top. So. On these last layers, we're only going to stick one or two dots, strings of spaghetti to make dots. Be really careful that they're random to the layer below. So I had one here, one here. I'm just going to put one in here. Flip it over. 
I'll put two, but I'm not going to put them where you'd think, to either side. I'm going to put kind of offset over here, and one way out here. And the last flip coming in. Alright, and then I just have this little bit. So I'm going to come in, scoop this off of here, flip it, trim that extra. Do a little white bit cleanup. Good grief. All right. So now what you have is this block. See the dots on the side? That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna let that rest just a little bit. I'm pressing on the top just a hair. I'll leave the sides alone. I'll be back with a handy dandy tool to show you how to proceed from here. Okay, the next part before we do any reducing or any more squishing is to get the white lines that make the little jaggy dots on the side. So what we're going to do is put this on its side and in each of these little divots where the folds are, we're going to put a strip of our thin white spaghetti. So right in that crease, spaghetti. Next one over. Right in that crease, spaghetti. Wherever there's a crease in the side, fill it with spaghetti. As you can see, I'm not being too careful with my trimming. I'm going to trim both of these sides soon enough. There I got a little uneven with my folding. You can see some white poking out. Make the adjustment. Now I usually don't put a stripe in that last little white bit. You never see it flip it over, same thing over here. Divot, spaghetti. I'm going to finish this up and we'll come back and preform the cane. Okay, we've got both sides with our stripes. I'm going to go ahead and press those in there. Press down on the glass on one side press down come on this one has moved out of its lane I'm gonna coax it back into its lane and then press it doesn't have to be perfect mother nature's not perfect all right so getting those flattened in there look we're gonna stay seated pretty good and then I'm going to trim the shoddy edges off of here See our dots? Nice. Alright, still have some air bubbles and things to work out of here. So, start from the center, smoosh out to the edges, press down, flip, start in the center, all the way down, and then work your way out. This helps push the air bubbles to the end. Then I come up. See, I'm getting a nice little cue. Same thing, middle. So I'm not really, I'm not really reducing right now. I'm playing with it to get air bubbles out. Just trying to work all air bubbles to the edge. Keeping it in that nice block. All 
more reduction will happen but right now this is what we have so get that pretty much into a square and now we're if you don't have this tool I suggest you go get one this is a cane bender from tiny Pandora and I will put the link to this in the description these come in square or round in many different sizes and they are just a joy when you're manipulating canes once again this is what I use if you don't have this I'm sure you can jam a paintbrush relative size and use that for what I'm about to do but I absolutely love these cane benders if you're a cane builder these are essentials so what I'm going to do green side up I'm going to line up my cane bender what I want to do is set the corner so diamond style I want to set that corner right in the middle yep that's the middle I set that in there and it starts making a crease and pushing this down in the middle and that's all I needed to do with this tool but I can't find anything better to do the job and I encourage you to get one of these all right, so now I have that nice dent. It's more in the middle on this side. I'm going to fix this right, over here. There we go. Dent it in there. All right, so now what you want to do is start making these kind of pointy. See what I'm doing here? Pulling up a little on the side. You can see if you're warping it too bad with your stripes. Try and keep your stripes intact and thin this edge thin this edge try and keep this line pretty even because you're going to bring it up to meet this line now Pac-Man going to squeeze flip it over squeeze we want to close Pac-Man's mouth in on itself go in that middle now same thing happens here flaring out over the edges right see it bending out this way I want to support that I'm trying to change the shape not the length so I'm going to push that back in and keep pushing these together push that back in keep closing this up as you see we're closing that gap on either side now and our dots are coming up to meet each other support those sides you don't want the whole thing to smoosh out come up here Seal a corner, seal a corner, now push those sides back in, we have a rough aloe triangle with dots and edges. Alright, it's that moment we all love so much. It's time for the big reveal. I've reduced this in a tall triangle, and there you have it. Let me show you a slice so you get that effect. Pull a slice off there. Look at those edges with your little white stripes that you've added. This is a detail. It doesn't look like a big deal right now, but when you put an arrangement together, it's gorgeous. When I make these into plants, I usually come down here and smoosh it into a longer leaf, smash those edges down, make it a little bit longer. It's hard to reduce it into a shape this size, but it's easy to make it into this shape once it's been sliced. So slice it pretty thick. And there you have an aloe leaf with gorgeous little white edges. You arrange these in bits of five around a spike of two and you have yourself an aloe plant.